What do you feel when you see this intro? Oh man, if you're like me, you're covering goosebumps right now. The Sega Dreamcast is a console that defined a whole generation of gamers and left an indelible mark on gaming history. It's hard to overstate just how much this console meant to so many people, me included, and how its influence can still be felt in the games we play and the whole gaming culture we love today. So join me on this journey through the rise and fall of the Sega Dreamcast, exploring its groundbreaking features, unforgettable games, and enduring legacy. So without any further ado, let's get started! Hey what's going on everyone, it's Tony here again and welcome to another video! The Dreamcast was first released in Japan on November 27th, 1998, followed by a North American release on September 9th, 1999, and an European release on October 14th, 1999. The console was initially priced at $199 in the US, well lower than its main competitor, the PlayStation 1, which was priced at $299 at the time. With games like Sonic Adventure, Crazy Tax and Shenmue, the Dreamcast quickly gained a massive following. Sonic Adventure in particular was a huge hit and was praised for its graphics, sound and gameplay. The Dreamcast's relatively low price point and cutting edge technology helped it gain another foothold in the gaming market. However, due to financial struggles, the price of the Dreamcast was later dropped to $149 in an attempt to boost sales. Bear with me and I'll explain why Sega struggled financially in a bit. Sega Dreamcast's marketing campaign was notable for emphasizing the console's online capabilities and the slogan, it's thinking. The advertisements featured a surreal, futuristic aesthetic with images of abstract shapes and the console floating in space. Sega also used some marketing tactics to promote the Dreamcast like sending promotional teams to public places to demo the console and games and doing partnerships with major retailers to showcase the Dreamcast and offer special promotions. The Dreamcast came out with a sleek, futuristic design, innovative features and some pretty interesting accessories. Here is a quick comparison between the Dreamcast, the PlayStation 1 and the Nintendo 64. In terms of polygons per second, the Dreamcast was capable of generating 3 million polygons per second while the PlayStation could generate 360,000 polygons per second and the Nintendo 64 only 160,000 polygons per second. The console was also ahead of its rival in terms of media. The Dreamcast used a proprietary media called DD-ROM, capable of storing up to 1.2 GB of data. The PS1 games were released using CD-ROM that can store up to 650 MB of data and the Nintendo 64 cartridge could store only up to 65 megabytes of data. For the first time in a console, we had the opportunity to experience online gaming with the built-in 56 kilobytes per second dial-up modem. Games like Phantasy Star Online and Quake 3 Arena are still among the five best online games on the Dreamcast. It was also the first home console to support DLC. In a time when all the game saves need to be stored in a memory card, Sega innovated once again when it introduced the Visual Memory Unit or VMU for short. It featured an LCD screen, a D-pad and two buttons, cause some games had an additional minigame that could be played on the VMU. Also, it showed the logo of the game you were playing. The Dreamcast also had other accessories like keyboard, mouse, light gun, fishing controller and microphone. Its controller design and features were innovative and ahead of their time. The inclusion of the analog stick, trigger buttons and VMU helped to make the Dreamcast a more versatile and immersive gaming experience and the built-in rumble pack added an extra layer of feedback and interactivity to gameplay. While the Dreamcast ultimately failed to gain a significant foothold in the market, its controller design and features helped to establish it as an important piece of gaming history. The Dreamcast launch titles were crucial to the console's early success. They helped to establish it as a serious contender in the console market. The Dreamcast launched with a diverse lineup of games ranging from sport titles to fighting and racing games. Games like Sonic Adventure, Mortal Kombat Gold, NFL2K, Power Stone, Blue Stinger, Soul Calibur and others were available from day one. Now, if the Dreamcast was so impressive, why did it fail? Well, it was a combination of a few critical factors. It all started back in 1997 when the Sega Saturn was struggling in sales and the Sega of America president 
Bernie Stoller started pressing Sega of Japan to develop a new hardware. When they finally announced that the Sega Saturn would be discontinued, the third-party developers were so angry because they were spending a lot of money on titles for a console that would soon be dead. In response, many companies decided not to support the Sega Dreamcast. Most of the console titles were developed by Sega itself. The production costs of the Dreamcast were relatively high compared to other consoles, which made it difficult for Sega to turn a profit. Also, Sega's management made a few questionable decisions during the Dreamcast's lifespan, like the sudden discontinuation of the console and the shift toward developing games for multiple platforms instead of focusing on the Dreamcast exclusively. Piracy was a big problem on the Dreamcast, as the console was based on the Windows CE, and with the ability to read burned CDs right out of the box, hackers quickly found a way to run backup games on the console. The final day in the coffin was when Sony announced in 1999 that the PlayStation 2 was in development and would be released the next year in 2000. It would be way more powerful than Sega's console, generating 6 million polygons per second compared to 3 million on the Dreamcast, and people would be able in addition to playing games to also watch DVD movies. Not to mention Microsoft coming to the console space with the original Xbox. The Dreamcast still has an active and vibrant homebrew and modding community. Because of its simple hardware design and open software architecture, the Dreamcast has become a popular platform for hobbyist developers to create and share their own games, demos, and applications. But despite its failure, the Dreamcast still has a special place in our hearts with its iconic games and amazing memory cards. The Dreamcast was one of the first consoles I bought with my own money and I have a lot of great memories playing it. Unfortunately, I don't have my original console anymore, but I could pick up another one after I moved to Europe. Let me know in the comments what memories you have with the Dreamcast and what your favorite game is. It's hard for me to choose just one favorite game, but the game I played the most back in the day was The House of the Dead 2. Well, that was it for today's video guys. Thank you for watching till the end. If it's your first time in the channel, please consider subscribing for more gaming content. I upload a new video every week. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, it helps a lot. Click on this box to watch my previous video if you haven't yet. And I hope you guys have a great week. God bless you all and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.